everyone, this is Catherine from ourwhiskeylullaby.com and today I am here to share about having a heart murmur. Um, how I learned how I had a heart murmur, um, being diagnosed, and basically what it is. So I ended up finding out that I had a heart murmur just basically because I went to my regular doctor complaining that I didn't feel good. Um, now, there's really no signs like that for a heart murmur. I was just sick, but um, my doctor, she ended up listening to my heart and she said, oh, that sounds kind of different, um, didn't sound right to her. So she said, I want to go ahead and send you over to the hospital to have an EKG done. Um, if you don't know what an EKG is, it's when they put those sticky pads all over your chest and you have to lay still for probably about uh, maybe five minutes or so. And then they can read your um, heartbeat and everything. So they sent me up to the hospital to have one of those EKGs done. Um, the EKG came back abnormal. So she said, okay, we're gonna have to send you to a cardiologist. At that time, I was 27 years old. So I thought, well, this is, this is really weird. I'm the youngest person in the cardiologist's office. So anyways, we went to the cardiologist and um, a lot of people will have a joke about how uh, cardiologists have di almost different ears than all the rest of us. So the cardiologist comes in and he, he ran his own EKG on me right there in his office. And that one actually came back okay. So he comes in and he listens to my heart with his stethoscope and he says, oh, you know you have a heart murmur. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, what? What is this? So he explained everything to me and he said, it sounds like it's just benign. He said, but I want you to go ahead and get an echocardiogram and wear a 24-hour Holter monitor. So a 24-hour Holter monitor is basically when you have um, like those, almost like the EKG, it's like two or three little sticky pads on you and it's hooked to wires that um, are hooked to almost like looking like a beeper and they you hold it on your hip or you can put it in your pocket or whatever and you have to leave it on for 24 hours and it continually runs your heart to see um, it measures your heart and feels your heartbeat and everything so basically that's what a Holter monitor does so I went home with a Holter monitor on and then I was scheduled to get an echocardiogram and an echocardiogram is when they, it's almost like an ultrasound of your heart. Um, if you've ever been pregnant, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, it's basically this, um, this little handheld thing that they put gel on and you lay flat and they just kind of rub it on your heart and it makes, um, it basically makes a picture that looks, you know, with the waves and stuff, uh, how your heart actually looks inside. So, um, Brian, you just asked, how did I sleep with it on? Um, I have to admit it was really annoying. Um, I had to make sure that I actually, um, my, my little, um, the little sticky pads, they like to come off in the middle of the night. So I just kind of slept really gently. Um, they would like to try to come out. So I'd have to rehook myself when I, woke up and rolled over and realized, uh oh, something's off. So I'd have to rehook it. And then with the beeper thing, I actually, I know it sounds kind of funny, but um, I sleep with uh, like uh, sweatpants on. So I'd have to sort of put the beeper in the drawstring of my pants, that part right there, because it would always fall out of my pocket if I rolled over. So I had to sleep with it right there, tucked into my pants or else it would fall out. Um, so that's basically how I slept with it on. Now there's 30 day Holter monitors and my husband has worn those before and they are way more annoying than a 24 hour one. The 24 hour is not so bad because you can eventually deal with it. But um, that's basically how I had to sleep with it. Now from what they've told me about a Holter monitor, um, they constantly monitor you 24 seven when you have it on. So sometimes they know if what they call a lead, one of the wires comes off in the middle of the night, they'll know if one of them comes off that, you know, you're not going in heart failure or anything. You're just 
one of your leads fell off. So as long as you keep checking and making sure that the leads are still on there and plugging them up, then you'll be okay. Um, so basically, I went in um, after I had the Holter monitor, I brought the Holter monitor back and, you know, they have to send it to the company and the company has to print out the whole entire long paper of your results um, of how you actually, um, how your heart looks. And then I went in for the echocardiogram and the echocardiogram um, basically shows uh, the function right there of your heart, how it's looking, what it's doing. And what's so neat is you can actually see, like they'll zoom into your valves and you'll actually see your valves sort of going like this. Um, you'll see everything of how your heart is working. And then they put it on um, like infrared so that they can see the blood flow too. So um, when I went in to have the first echocardiogram. The tech was really nice. Um, of course, just like normal techs, they don't really tell you anything. They just say, okay, you know, we'll, um, we'll pass this on to the doctor and he'll look at it. Um, so uh, happy life, you just said in your message, was the doctor reassuring from when he first said something was off and having to go home with this machine and following up tests. Yeah, he was really reassuring. Um, I love my cardiologist. He's one of the best right here in North Georgia. Um, when he told me that he heard a heart murmur, my entire face just, oh my gosh, I didn't know what it was. Cause you know, when you first think that something's wrong with your heart, especially when you're really young, you don't really know to expect. And he's like, don't worry. I think it's benign. We just want to make sure. But I didn't really, um, feel too nervous after that. Um, but that's probably because my own husband had already been a patient of their office and my husband has had every single heart test known to man, including the heart cath. So I thought, well, as long as he's not asking me to go ahead and go through a heart cath, then I'm probably all good. <laughs> Cause I, I was really scared of something like that, but um, wearing a little monitor and then having an echocardiogram, that wasn't too scary for me. But um, I was nervous at first, but he did tell me that he thought it was benign, which means that it won't really hurt you. It's just something that's annoying that you have to live with for the rest of your life if it doesn't go away. So um, back to the echocardiogram, um, I think the doctor, I went in to see the doctor and they told me the results of it. Um, so basically what a heart murmur is. Um, they told me that a heart murmur is caused um, one of either two ways. So either you have a hole in your heart, which will eventually need to be repaired or um, you have a faulty valve. So they found out that mine is a faulty valve. Um, my valve is the tricuspid valve. That's what they told me. Um, and that they said, they're not so worried about that valve having a problem because that's the one that supplies air to your lungs. So they said um, that has shorter distance to go because your lungs are right there. It's not the valve that has to supply blood flow to your entire body. So um, they said that, you know, tricuspid's a lot better to have because it's a shorter distance. So it's not pumping so hard to get to the rest of your body. So um, basically what they told me is um, that it is called tricuspid regurgitation. And regurgitation means that um, my blood flow is going both ways. So when my valves are opening like this, they're not closing all the way. They're closing about right here and blood is going up and then it's also coming right back down. So um, they showed me right there on the echocardiogram, you could actually see the infrared of my blood flow and I could see right then when the valve was going up and down, I could see the red blood coming and then the blue for the old blood still trying to go back into the valve. So they said that they measure how bad your heart murmur is three ways. They said um, it's just mild, moderate, and then severe. So they said um, that mine is actually trace. So I said, well, where does that fit in? Is that mild? And they said, it's not even mild. So mine is just barely there. It's like maybe that much. So they said, um, right now we just monitor it. I'm doing good, um, that there's no problems that they can foresee. Now um, it can get worse over time as you get older. Um, and they said that 
you know, they just keep monitoring it, like with the echocardiograms to see how it's moving along. Um, they told me that usually people um, don't hit the severe mark until they are over 70 years old. Um, and then once it's really severe like that, then you would have to have a valve replacement. Um, but they said they've never seen anybody have to have something like that done before 70 years old. So um, in a few days, I turned 30. So I have 40 more years to go before I'd even have to think about something like that. But they said mine is so small that I might not even have any problems later on in life anyways. Um, what was interesting enough was the tech, she actually told me that having a heart murmur is actually more common than most people think. Um, and I didn't actually know this until my own daughter was diagnosed with a heart murmur a few years ago. And um, she went to a cardiologist and hers is also benign. Um, and hers is due to a valve as well. Now, I'm not sure what kind of valve she, hers was because they only had her wear a Holter monitor. They didn't actually have her do the echocardiogram because she was so little. So they said, um, now I don't know if the statistics of this are true or not, but they told me like uh, two out of every five people will have a heart murmur in their life. Um, some people will have them as children and they will eventually go away um, before they're 20 something. And then some people like me will have them even into their twenties. So, um, just a lot of people, you don't even know that you have it because a lot of times it will heal itself as you're growing. Um, and it really doesn't show any problems or, um, you know, any symptoms that you would really have it. The only way that they really notice that you have it is if you hear it. And a lot, sometimes you can hear it, but you've got to have really good ears to be able to hear it. Cause I mean, you got to think I didn't learn that I had a heart murmur until I was 27 by a doctor that heard something funny in my heart, but I have been to doctors since I was born and no one else has ever told me that I had a heart murmur. Um, no one else has ever heard it. So, I mean, sometimes even at the cardiologist's office, the techs can't even hear it. So it's, it's something that is kind of hard to catch. So if you've been diagnosed with a heart murmur, um, I would tell you, you know, don't worry. It's a lot of times it's benign. It's not, you know, anything to be really scared over. And I think that um, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with than having being told that you're going into heart failure. Um, it's not as scary as what it is, what people might think it is, especially with your heart. Everybody kind of tends to get scared when they hear something. Oh, your heart, <gasps> you know, but it's not so bad. A heart murmur is not so bad to have. Now, my grandmother, she had one and hers was a hole in her heart. So um, I'm not really sure how those are caused, but mine, I guess, was caused at birth. So um, thank you guys for listening to my broadcast about learning how you had a heart murmur. Um, and I hope to see you guys again soon. I'm gonna do another broadcast about um, uh, some other medical problems probably in about two more weeks. So I hope you guys stay tuned to my channel. Bye.